there's this pretty cool property about similar figures that has to do with their perimeters and areas. And the first thing that we'll look at is the relationship between the perimeters of similar figures. Now, when two figures are similar, the ratio of the perimeters is... So if you know the relationship between the side lengths, then you know the relationship between the perimeters. And if you know the relationship between the perimeters, obviously, then you know the relationship between the side lengths. So here's an example. We've got two rectangles, and they're telling us that they're similar. And we want to find the ratio from small to large of the perimeters. So the ratio of the side lengths is 4 to 6. So any ratio that is equivalent to 4 over 6 is going to be equivalent to the ratio. Remember, a ratio is just the relationship between the two values. So the perimeter could be 8 and 12. Well, in theory, it really can't be because then that would be 0. Um, but it could be 12 and 18, or it could be... 16 and 24. Like, you don't know what the what the actual values are because they don't give us enough information, but they tell us that the ratio is 4 to 6. Now, you could reduce that. I would encourage you to reduce that to 2 over 3 would be the proper ratio between the perimeters. Um, so 8 over 12 is equal to 2 thirds. 12 over 18 is equal to 2 thirds. 16 over 24 is equal to two-thirds. Anything that's equivalent to two-thirds or four-sixths is going to be the relationship between their perimeters. The other thing that is cool um, about similar figures is that when you want to find their areas, it's equal to the square of the ratio of their corresponding side lengths. So if you know the ratio between the side lengths, when you square that ratio, that's the relationship between the areas. So the relationship between the side lengths is 6 over 10. When you square that, you get 36 over 100. Now, I don't know if the official areas are 36 and 100, but the relationship is 36 and 100. So I could have a 36 and a 100, but it might not be, right, because I don't have enough information. It could be... Uh, 72 and 200. That's also equivalent to my ratio. The ratio that um, will always be the same is 36 over 100. Because area is, t is a two-dimensional shape, so that's why you have to incorporate the two. Here's how we actually use this information about the relationship between perimeter and area. We've got a swimming pool and a volleyball court, and they tell us just a couple of pieces of information. They say that this is 18 yards on the pool, this is 10 yards on the um, volleyball court, and the area of the volleyball court is 200, and the perimeter of the volleyball court is 60. So what we have to find is the perimeter and the area of the pool. If we know the relationship between the side lengths, then we know the relationship between the perimeters, and we can calculate the relationship between the areas and calculate the values. So I'm going to set up my relationship, and it doesn't matter what you put on top and what you put on the bottom. I'll do pool over volleyball court. So that says VB court. So the pool is 18, and the volleyball court is 10, right? The corresponding sides are 18 and 10. That's equal to the perimeter, the, re the relationship of the perimeter. So I've got side lengths and then I've got perimeter. Side lengths is equal to perimeter because that's what it means to be proportional. So the perimeter of the volleyball court is 60, so that's going to go here on the bottom. And since I want to find the perimeter of the pool, I'll put an X, I will cross and multiply, 10x equals 1080. So that means that the perimeter of the pool is uh, 108 yards. So that's 
P of pool. Okay, now we have to find the area of the pool. So if we know the relationship between the side lengths, we can create a relationship between the areas. So I'll do same thing, 18 over 10. Now, before I can create the proportion, I have to square that. Since area is a two-dimensional shape, I have to square my ratio. So that gives me 324 over 100, and then I'm allowed to create the proportion. In area, you can't create the proportion until after you square it. Since they give me the area of the volleyball court and volleyball courts on the bottom, I'll make that equal to 200. And then I can, I don't need to cross multiply. I can see right here it's times 2. So that's going to be uh, 648 yards squared is the area of the pool. Now I did all of this, mind you, without ever knowing the length of the pool. I found the perimeter of the pool and the area of the pool with only knowing the length or the width, whatever you want to call it. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.